So how can we tell, based on a sketch, whether or not a flux integral through a surface in three dimensions is positive, negative, or zero? Well, just like with the, the example in the plane, uh, we have to have an understanding first of what orientation is going to count as positive. Right? So if I look at this patch of surface and these vector field arrows, it looks like there's definitely a non-zero flux of this vector field through the surface because the field arrows are kind of cutting through rather than following along the surface. Um, but we don't know for sure whether that flux should count as positive or that flux should count as negative until we come up with an orientation for our surface. And so to come up with an orientation, along our surface, we have to choose one of the two different possibilities for a normal direction. So back when we found a normal vector in the original preview activity, we used the cross product of the two tangent vectors, rs and rt. But what's the problem with cross product? The problem with cross product is that if I switch the two vectors that I'm crossing, what's going to happen to their cross product? So the cross product's not symmetric. So if I switch the, the s and t partial derivatives in this normal vector calculation over here, I don't get exactly the same vector. That's the bad news. The good news is I get an exactly equal and opposite vector. Right? I just get the opposite of what we would have gotten doing it the other way. And those two choices, the cross product of rs with rt and the opposite, the cross product of rt with rs, define the two different possible orientations that we can use. They give, us, they give me two normal vector fields to my surface that point in exactly opposite directions to one another. And so which one of those we choose is what defines what the positive direction of flux through our surface is going to be. Um, when we talk about Stokes' theorem in about an hour or so from now, um, we're going to also have a right-hand rule convention for how to determine which direction around the boundary of a surface that we should be going to determine the circulation, which is part of Stokes' theorem. Um, our fingers are going to go in the direction of the circulation around the boundary, and our thumb is going to point in the direction of the positive flux. So it's yet another one of these right-hand rule conventions um, that just arose as more mathematicians and physicists sort to try to figure out what ought to be the right thing. So in this activity, we're given five different vector fields. Um, and they're embedded inside of our textbook, which is a nifty trick. Um, to see the different fields, you just use this drop-down box up here and change it. So here's vector field number two. And then three, four, and five you can access from the same drop-down. And I was a little confused at the visualization here at first, because it's showing us a lot of information. But what it's showing us is, first of all, uh, in blue is a vector field that we're going to try to quantify the flux of that vector field through my surface. And then each of the blue vectors is being resolved into a purple component which is parallel to the surface and a green component which is perpendicular to the surface. So I guess my first question to you before we start this activity is if we're going to look for flux, which color arrows should we be looking at on this diagram? Which are going to be the ones that actually count? The green <laughs> ones, the perpendicular component of the vector field through the surface, those are going to be the ones that we care about if we're thinking about flux. And those green arrows that point in the same direction, same choice of normal field to my surface as we chose to orient our surface, those are going to count as positive flux. So these arrows right here, these green ones, are pointing toward the same, uh, the same direction away from the surface as our chosen yellow normal vector is. Um, whereas these green vectors over here are pointing in an opposite direction, and so those are going to count as negative flux. So your job is going to be to look through this catalog of five different vector fields and decide which ones of them are going to correspond to a positive total flux, which ones are going to correspond to negative, which ones are zero, and try to arrange them from least to greatest, so most negative to most positive uh, in terms of their total flux through these patches of surface.